Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, has anybody uh, received an email from me this morning about the quiz? Good afternoon, Alhamdulillah. Uh, actually, we haven't received any emails, but the email only is seen in the Microsoft team chat. Okay. Okay, if it was in uh, MS Team Store, you have seen it. Okay, not in uh, email. I'm not telling you. So it's in the uh, Teams. Uh, yeah, I can see. It. No. Okay, so uh, is there any questions about the quiz? Okay, no questions. Then let's continue on the lecture. <coughs> Yesterday we uh, started about our candidate uh, well selection criteria, <coughs> and we stated that uh, there must be enough uh, hydrocarbons to um, within the drainage area. Uh, to start to plan the uh, simulation work. Um, also, the water cut should be uh, within the uh, within some limits, not to increase uh, water cut after the um, uh, stimulation or massive acidization, because massive acidization may trigger uh, water uh, producing zones as well to higher production. <clears throat> uh, permeability here is uh, should be expected to be higher than uh, some limits. Again, it is a, about um, if it is too low for oil or gas uh, reservoirs, then uh, it might be better to consider uh, other stimulation methods like uh, potential uh, sorry hydraulic uh, fracturing. Uh, which is uh, more efficient in terms of uh, increasing permeability and connectivity with the reservoir and a uh, <clears throat> production system and has to has to uh, to be capable to um, handle the incre incremental oil that we plan to uh, plan or unplanned unexpected incremental oil <coughs> sorry from the reservoir but to select a uh, appropriate candidate we have to look at uh, well history well production history well drilling history uh, what was the uh, the well location in the well in the reservoir <coughs> and uh, use any uh, field surveillance uh, available like a PLT, pressure temperature monitoring, um, well testing data to identify uh, <coughs> the um, correct cause of the formation damage, uh, its place. Um, is there any sand control uh, in place or not? Uh, and then we have to look at uh, the well conditions. Is there any uh, problems with the injection, with the uh, tubing um, conditions? Like, uh, <coughs> is it uh, dirty or is it um, maybe some leakage in the tubing? 
and um, logistics about uh, bringing on the uh, equipment, uh, appropriate proper equipment, proper uh, materials to the well site, and um, <clears throat> select simulation type, the composition, the uh, volumes and weights, how much to inject. <clears throat> which will depend on a uh, type of uh, damage uh, uh, and location of the damage. Uh, and of course, the severity of the damage. And the, 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 these all should be um, considered in simulation design and execution and later in simulation. And of course, prevention is always better than uh, Caring. So <clears throat> here's the, some examples when the um, problem may not be uh, even damaged, but uh, the other uh, problem, other uh, reasons for uh, low productivity or low lower production rates, uh, lower than the potential of the world. And we consider it algorithm of candidate selection going to information availability. And this is the uh, chart of a, um, the stimulation cycle when we go through uh, identifying the um, candidate selection, <clears throat> identifying the candidate, evaluating some stimulation economics, like uh, if what we have, what we will get if we do this. Uh, simulation and uh, deciding is it suitable or not and further steps you can uh, have a look on your books. Uh, selection of chemical treatment type, uh, which type of the treatment we apply and in at, at which locations. There are some uh, we do only in tubing and uh, through the well bore. To, uh, which is uh, acid soak or acid wash to clean the tubing, to clean the perforations and the <coughs> sand phase from the uh, some uh, solids, some uh, um, uh, like kill pills or some uh, diverters. Uh, matrix acidizing is uh, aimed to the near well bore around a uh, meter or so uh, <clears throat> away from the sand face or well bore, and it is done by injecting this uh, acid into the formation below the formation uh, fracture, uh, fracture gradient. And other matrix uh, treatments are, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, are uh, uh, aimed to uh, solve. Uh, or dissolve uh, some uh, organic um, scales, like scaling like uh, wax or uh, asphaltines, uh, remove emulsions, and these are squeezed into the uh, well and reservoir to um, to inhibit to uh, these uh, to prevent those uh, scaling uh, and emulsions. Okay, these are some uh, damage types and uh, what are the symptoms. You can read it through your, in your book. And if you have any questions about these points, just uh, uh, ask. Uh, another <clears throat> important uh, point is to uh, identify the type and location of the formation damage because the uh, <clears throat> type of a uh, type uh, of the chemicals and uh, volumes to be injected uh, will be um, <coughs> depending on this uh, parameters like the type of the damage, uh, where it is uh, located, where, where we identify this uh, damage and based on that uh, different type of uh, compositions and rate and uh, volumes should be designed for particular um, matrix simulation 
matrix uh, acidization. So, <coughs> therefore, we have to uh, understand that uh, uh, choosing not uh, appropriate uh, fluid or composition uh, because of a, um, a wrongly identified type or uh, <coughs> location of the damage or uh, low productivity uh, cause may uh, result in another formation damage <coughs> as of a uh, the consolidation of rock, ma rock matrix because of the solution of cement, we, were, we, we talked about that in early, uh, uh, earlier in uh, formation damage uh, part, and here again uh, uh, we have to understand the rock cement material, the rock mineralogy, uh, to uh, and then decide on and do some lab text, uh, tests how this uh, acid composition will affect the rock itself and uh, then decide on the uh, application of this type of uh, compositions. Again, as a result, it might be uh, uh, triggering the uh, migra fine migration and uh, blockage of the pores by these uh, fines another formation, uh, type of formation damage. Uh, <clears throat> uh, secondary precipitation of acid rock reaction results when, when the uh, spent acid, again, uh, the, the results of the acids, the results of reaction may react or may uh, precipitate uh, itself or may react with the fluids uh, or the uh, rock minerals in the reservoir in the formation and again uh, blocking the uh, pores. Um, the, so the, the same with the incompatibilities with, uh, between the injected fluids and uh, also um, reservoir fluids. So <clears throat> it might again uh, cause precipitation, precipitations. It might cause a, uh, emulsions uh, created uh, for example, acid crude oil uh, may uh, reaction or uh, getting in contact, they may uh, form a sludge, which is very high um, um, viscosity, amorph uh, kind of instance, and that's uh, also will be plugging or. Um, um, <clears throat> reducing the mobility of the oil and uh, probably relative permeability also will be affected. Um, formation of uh, viscous acid oil emulsions uh, is also another type of um, um, <clears throat> possible reaction. Vetability change when we inject surfactants, this might uh, change vetability and vetability in some cases uh, uh, when the if we are producing oil then uh, the oil vetability of the um, changing the uh, rock vetability to oil vetability may uh, cause some damage because then relative permeability will change and water block due to the liquid volumes Injected, it's uh, again, um, we learned in formation <coughs> um, damage part when we uh, block the pores with the uh, water drops uh, as, as a result of a injection, uh, completion or uh, killing uh, uh, fluid into the wall board. So that's kind of a um, formation damage can happen due to matrix stimulation. So stimulation is not a <coughs> operation that will give you 100% success unless you select correct acid, unless you select correct uh, 
the, uh, um, properly identify the type of the uh, type and location of the damage, uh, severity of the damage, and um, and then apply it uh, to the, uh, the and design it and evaluate. Okay. Um, here is again another uh, kind of uh, demonstration of how acid can uh, cause a damage, formation damage. Uh, uh, for example, it may uh, cause corrosion uh, in the uh, equipment. It may cause iron precipitation, especially if our uh, tubing is um, dirty but with some uh, um, scaling with some uh, the uh, uh, solids on on in, in this uh, tubing and uh, uh, the HCL will clean this scale scale from the tubing and as we inject the fluid the acid into the reservoir into the formation all this scale will be injected into the formation therefore uh, before running, uh, before uh, uh, doing the acid job, uh, we have to again check the uh, roll conditions, tubing conditions. Is the is the tubing uh, clean and safe to run these operations? And um, if there is a suspicion to the uh, suspicion to the um, any scaling in the tubing is better to have first acid wash to clean the uh, tubing, produce out the uh, to the surface those all those scales and uh, solids, and then start uh, the acid job or do the acid job with the uh, clean coil tubing. Uh, to prevent all this uh, scaling to be injected into the uh, formation. Uh, liquid block in gas wells, we talked about that because of uh, spent acid, again, uh, in low pressure wells, when this uh, may block the uh, pores uh, around the um, well bore. Uh, fine mobilization uh, because of uh, HCL it may cause the um, silica fines. Silica is the, um, as you probably know, is the major material in sandstones, and uh, it's also um, present in some uh, to some extent uh, in uh, carbonates as well. So uh, may cause silica fines to be released uh, from clays and a uh, um, mud acid uh, or fluoric acid may uh, precipitate uh, silica fines as well because it goes into the uh, reaction with those uh, materials. So, <clears throat> and we talked about the fluid incompatibilities. Uh, forming a uh, emulsion and uh, sludge, which is also a um, type of formation damage. So again, uh, do the uh, selecting the fluid again uh, will depend on uh, location and type of formation damage. Uh, will depend on formation chemistry and uh, mineralogy. What is the uh, mineralogical and chemical composition of the rocks? We have to understand how it will uh, if, uh, the, uh, react with the selected fluid. So we have to check it, uh, test it in laboratory uh, uh, on core samples and with the uh, various uh, fluids. Um, how it will affect the uh, in terms of again as we talked about fines generations precipitations or cement uh, the, the dissolution of the cement material 
um, acid uh, crude oil uh, reaction uh, diversion of placement in, uh, of the treating fluid. It's also important to, um, for the success of the uh, uh, the acid job because. Um, if we have a, a three zones of product production and one of them or two of them is damaged, then we, when we start, we will talk about that later, but just to give you an uh, insight, when we start acid job, it is uh, related to applying uh, injection pressures. So, and the fluid will go as a naturally, will go to the uh, low resistance pass. So the most of the acid will uh, be placed or will be injected into the areas that have uh, no uh, formation damage because the areas, the zones with the formation damage uh, have a, uh, a higher permeability. So uh, sorry, the zones with the uh, higher damage have a uh, low permeability and fluid will be resistant to, to flow in there. And of course, we have to take and into account temperature uh, carvis. Okay. Uh, and here you can see some uh, guidelines for the uh, acid types to be applied in uh, different formations. When uh, in carbonates, we can use uh, HCl and acetic, uh, acetic uh, and never uh, <coughs> the um, mud acid or uh, well, uh, phthoric acid. Uh, um, under thoric acid, uh, because uh, the um, it will um, precipitate. There will be some precipitations of uh, materials that will uh, cause even more damage than it was before. Uh, so as we learned before, uh, the hydraulic acid in the damaged carbonate cemented sandstones. Uh, well, in, in carbonates, uh, in pure carbonates, HCl will create new channels, new wormholes to, for the, to improve the uh, communication with the uh, um, reservoir and uh, increase the uh, increase a uh, uh, effective radius uh, wellbore radius and in uh, in the sandstones with some um, carbonate cement where the uh, percentage of or content of the carbonates more than 15 percent or 20 percent we can use hcl as well and this will create a, uh, a solving this uh, cement, uh, we carbonate cement, we may create a new channels to bypass damage and that will increase again the uh, communication with the uh, uh, good reservoir uh, and uh, the well bore and mud acid uh, is used in low carbonate uh, sandstones and it it is uh, reacting with the uh, mud uh, fluid uh, and the uh, soluble fines that are in uh, in the reservoir or the mud fluid to clean to remove the damage okay um, <clears throat> HCl is mostly used uh, acid in uh, as in the petroleum industry because uh, it's mostly uh, used for to dissolve carbonate minerals and as you can see uh, one cubic meter of 
15% uh, HDL can dissolve 220 kilogram or uh, 001 um, 0.09 cubic meter limestone. So that's a, uh, how it, it affects the um, rock. Uh, also dissolves uh, chloride, uh, iron containing clay. So it's again uh, maybe uh, helping to um, um, in the clay uh, um, finds my migration and the clay level as well as um, <clears throat> dissolve dislodged iron oxide oxide or scale or rust on the uh, tubing. So that's why we have to be careful uh, for the uh, before before we inject this uh, acid into the well. We have to be sure that um, there is a no uh, scaling, mechanical scaling or inorganic scaling or rust on the tubing, and uh, because we may uh, ACL will dissolve and. Uh, make the mobile make a mobile uh, those uh, scales particles or uh, rust particles and it will be injected into the reservoir as a solid and it may block the pores and it may uh, cause first the formation damage both way uh, preventing injection of the acid material and then preventing the uh, production from this uh, formation <clears throat> and uh, highly corrosive to steel, and uh, therefore we have to um, uh, apply corrosion inhibitors to uh, to prevent this corrosion uh, to steel from this uh, acid during the uh, <clears throat> acid job, and actually the corrosion. Uh, Inhibitors are applied uh, almost all the time of the um, wall production. If there is a um, proper installation on the well site and if the project is uh, well thought, I mean, the well production project is well uh, um, <clears throat> thought to be. Um, carried out and uh, usage of the additives surfactants to suspend unsoluble components from uh, impure uh, limestones and dolomites it means uh, in some cases in some uh, rock there might be some uh, insoluble components uh, in the uh, carbonates we, uh, so the rock minerals or rock material that will not be solved by this uh, uh, acid and they will be uh, precipitating and uh, uh, in the uh, formation pores, pore uh, space uh, <clears throat> and therefore these additives and surfactants increasing the uh, um, surface tension will suspend those components, those particles in uh, in the fluid. So when we produce it, it will be produced back uh, to the surface, not uh, without part uh, precipitation in the uh, reservoir, in the formation. There is a uh, term of dissolving power which identifies the about the uh, the amount of mineral that can be consumed or solved by the given amount of acid, both in a uh, mass or volume basis. Okay. So here is the uh, mass basis, or here is the, and this is the uh, volume based uh, the formulation, and here you can see some uh, <coughs> the, um, minerals 
and their uh, dissolving uh, power and the acid uh, with the uh, dissolving power with different um, a different um, concentration. So it means uh, the uh, five percent uh, hydrochloric acid can dissolve uh, this amount of a uh, limestone in in mass. Uh, unit and so on. So uh, these are the kind of a like a guideline, or you can use this to identify which acid you need for and uh, uh, against which uh, minerals you have in your example limestone or uh, uh, dolomites what kind of minerals what kind of chemical composition and how uh, the amount of uh, material will be dissolved using this uh, uh, sorry this acid and this uh, this is the uh, mass of the dissolved material at 100% uh, hydrochloric acid. So 100% 100, 100 hydrochloric acid will dissolve 1.37 uh, limestone. And the, as we uh, and these are the different uh, concentrations of these um, acids. Okay, and uh, the uh, mud acid, uh, the um, uh, hydrophoric acid or phthoric acid is very aggressive acid and it dissolves clays, cl uh, quartz and micas. These all are part of a plastic uh, uh, reservoirs, sandstones and uh, uh, clay sh shales. It has a, uh, of course, the um, safety issues. Both acids has uh, safety issues, but this phthoric acid, especially, is uh, non-user uh, friendly. It's um, used, still used, with the combination with HCl, and. Um, Maybe uh, made by adding solid ammonium uh, B fluoride to HCl. So, uh, only very uh, small amount of HCl phthoric uh, 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 acid with the combination of a, uh, um, HCl, like see here you can see, full strength is only 3% of. Uh, <clears throat> Hydraulic phthor, uh, hydrophthoric uh, acid and 12% of hydrofluoric acid. And a um, half strength will be just 1.5% of uh, phthoric acid. And uh, hydrofluoric acid forms precipitates with a uh, natrium, kalium, and calcium uh, the, uh, minerals. And uh, the um, therefore the the HCl preflush removes these cations prior to uh, HF injection. So these cations are uh, um, dissolved by the HCl, and then we inject HF uh, or phthoric acid to uh, remove the damage dissolving uh, the quartz, clay, and mica uh, material that is causing the damage. Okay. Um, the usage of HF is prohibited, well, not saying prohibited, is, uh, it's, it's strongly not recommended, never use HF uh, phthoric acid with the carbonates because 
it will get into it will precipitate it will create a carb uh, calcium firm uh, toric uh, um, which will precipitate and uh, will create a formation damage okay therefore if we if we sus if you suspect that there is a uh, uh, carbonates in your sandstones, so you have to uh, pre-flush with the HCl to remove those carbonates, to dissolve these carbonates. So when you uh, then inject the, H, uh, the toric acid, you don't have this uh, material as a reaction of the, uh, as a result of reaction, okay? And as we said before, we have to remove uh, natrium, kalium, and calcium or sodium, potassium, and calcium uh, ions to prevent the formation of insoluble, insoluble uh, fluor silicates and fluor aluminates. But these are all uh, results of a uh, reaction with the hydrophoric uh, acid and therefore as it says here and therefore uh, we have to be careful with this with the application of this um, acid on the, uh, the during the uh, the, the um, matrix acidization we have to plan the acid job with hydrophoric uh, acid to, um, to take into account all these uh, pitfalls, all these um, uh, possible damages, possible disadvantages of hydrophoric acid. And here you can see the uh, dissolving power of the um, hydrophoric acid or, uh, uh, on quartz and albite these are part of the uh, sandstone uh, minerals sandstone uh, rock and uh, you can see the volume uh, dissolving power sorry the mass dissolving power and volume dissolving power uh, and here it is the acid concentration <coughs> So this is again about the um, uh, using the HCl HF together to avoid uh, these precipitations. And over flushing the uh, mud acid into the deep into the formation. Uh, uh, or back produce spent acid rapidly to, sur to surface to prevent the precipitation of those. Also, maybe um, the remedy from these um, reactions. Over flushing, we talked about this uh, when we talk uh, the um, damage color. So, uh, when we remove the damage from the well bore to the uh, some distance and the longer distance as you can see the longer distance the less effect on the productivity of course depending on the color thickness the thicker the color the uh, more effect on the uh, productivity and this is the uh, formula to calculate the uh, productivity uh, based on these parameters. Okay, uh, there are some other organ uh, the uh, acid systems uh, like uh, organic acids, uh, acetic and formic acids. Uh, they are used to remove carbonate LCM or bridging agents, uh, mainly uh, the drilling fluid uh, damage removal, and slow acting and will allow deeper penetration of acid. 
So, um, <clears throat> uh, it may uh, the, 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 the remove the damage at deeper depths, low corrosivity and easier inhibition at higher temperatures uh, above uh, 250 Fahrenheit. Okay. And there are some other powdered acids, uh, acid mixtures, uh, retarded acid systems, uh, which are um, used to um, they are uh, acting slower and they are going into the um, deeper into the reservoir and uh, they are dissolving the acids in non-aqueous solvent uh, uh, and uh, retarded means uh, the delayed action so therefore they may go into the deeper into the reservoir and uh, affect more deep uh, damage <coughs> So selection uh, again uh, of the acid composition uh, should be carried out with the uh, um, identifying the rock material. What is the rock material? How uh, how the uh, this acid uh, um, composition uh, injected fluid will uh, react will. Uh, um, with the uh, rock material and uh, therefore we have to make some uh, laboratory tests to identify the formation mineralogy uh, to uh, identify type and location of the minerals uh, porosity cementation and clays of this uh, rock material what kind of a uh, chemical composition they are, what kind of a, uh, minerals they are, and uh, is it uh, the cementation material? Is it a uh, the the core material or matrix material? And that's that will uh, be tested in laboratories uh, using the pore. Um, sorry, core uh, core samples, and of course, fluid to fluid compatibility tests uh, should be also be done to um, uh, understand uh, is there any solid sludge is for uh, formed uh, by by this uh, crude oil in contact, uh, finds the destabilization, uh, emulsions uh, formation. These all have to be checked tested in the laboratory. So that's how the laboratory tests tests are important. Um, <clears throat> again, the uh, talking about injection rates, we've stated before that the uh, injection must be uh, at the pressures below the uh, fracture, uh, fracturing pressure and we have to um, make sure that we are injecting in the radial direction uh, so the and the uh, and the, we produce the radial direction radial direction radial uh, orientation to have a maximum effect on the um, maximum effect of the acid job or any uh, stimulation job. Additives are the, um, used again, as, as I said uh, before, uh, to inhibit the uh, some uh, asphaltins, uh, the uh, wax before injection, uh, or it can be used a, uh, to uh, inhibit the corrosion. It can be used to uh, to 
um, pro, pro, um, prevent any corrosion from the uh, fresh acid and uh, spent acid. Uh, also, uh, these uh, should be um, used to um, keep the uh, insoluble material, as we said before, uh, in the suspension, so we can produce it back from the reservoir easily. Okay, and um, of course the uh, additives are quite expensive substance, and uh, when you choose any additive just because it is a uh, doing this job is not a uh, a good way of thinking. You have to realize the uh, economical effect as well. Uh, will it help as much as you spend in it? Okay. So uh, the the additives can be uh, corrosive uh, inhibitors, dissolved in the acid. Uh, eliminating the 95-98% uh, of metal loss or rust, uh, little effect on acid performance, so uh, it's not a, uh, a big deal in terms of uh, acid job results. Um, they are dependent on temperature, of course, and uh, may alter uh, formation wettability, resulting in damage. Uh, surfactants, uh, these are the um, low surface tension or interfacial tension act, uh, uh, material, which uh, again reduces the surface tension, which means uh, in that case the uh, uh, it allow the penet the acid to penetrate deeper because uh, reduced uh, tension uh, uh, surface tension and uh, helps also to return the uh, flow of spent acid because, again, for the same reason. It keeps a uh, um, flowing the acid. Uh, act, may act as a demulsifier to inhibit the formation of uh, emulsions. Uh, solvent uh, can also remove damaging oil wetting place from a rock. Uh, when the uh, oil based mud uh, has altered wettability for water wet to oil wet. So, there are some uh, types of additives clay inhibitors, uh, gelling or fluid loss agents, nitrogens uh, to assist uh, in the flow back and cleanup, retardant uh, added to slow down the reaction time to allow the uh, acid to go deeper in the reservoir. Um, uh, different polymers to uh, increase uh, viscosity again to help. Uh, it's not an increasing viscosity to very high uh, values, but just a little bit increased viscosity uh, again, will slow down the acid leak off uh, into large pores or fractures and let the um, acid do the job uh, as it goes into the reservoir uh, properly. Okay. And clay in inhibitors will um, control the iron uh, precipitations, the uh, prevent precipitations of iron salts. Uh, will help with the uh, H2S present uh, complexing agent to prevent precipitations of those as well. Okay, uh, that's all I had to, I was going to talk about uh, today. Uh, next time we will talk about the diversion uh, or placement of the uh, acid into the correct into the uh, proper uh, zones and uh
other um, <clears throat> issues uh, related to the matrix acidizations. Any questions today? No question. Thank you, Alkhamar. Okay, I know you are very excited about the quiz, so I'll finish uh, uh, now um, and have a good time with the quiz. Again, no stress. I believe uh, it's easy. Uh, the questions are uh, not very uh, challenging, I hope if you were learning studying through the semester and this is only for your um, favor to make this uh, material more per uh, perceptive yourself okay good luck thank you see you so, so. thank you sister so so, so man.